condensation of ester can also take place with ketones. So let's suppose we take a ketone, we take our alkoxide base and the ester and place it into a single mixture. What exactly will take place? Basically, a combination aldol clasin condensation reaction will take place between the ketone and our ester. So what exactly is the first step of this reaction and why does it actually take place? Well, basically we have a strong base, the alkoxide, and two acids. One of these acids is our ketone, the other acid is our ester. Now ketones are more acidic than esters because they contain more acidic alpha hydrogens. And so it's the strong base, the alkoxide, that reacts with our ketone and not with our ester. So in the first step, we have the alkoxide base that reacts with the ketone, our uh, Lewis acid, so the alkoxide base deprotonates one of our alpha hydrogens to form a ketone ester. So remember, unlike in this reaction, in the Claisen condensation, our strong alkoxide base deprotonates the alpha hydrogen of the ester. But in this case, because we have the more acidic ketone present in our mixture, it's the ketone that reacts to form our ketone ketone enolate and it's the ketone enolate that will act as our nucleophile in the second addition step with our ester to form this tetrahedral intermediate we call intermediate B. So in the addition step it's our two electrons on the alpha carbon of the ketone that nucleophilically attacks the carbon oxygen of our ester kicking off the pi bond placing the two electrons onto our oxygen. Now once the tetrahedral intermediate forms, two things can take place, just like in the Claisen condensation. So our pi bond between the oxygen and the carbon will basically reform and there are two potential leaving groups. So if this section acts as the leaving group, we basically go on in the reverse pathway to reform our starting material the ketone as well as the ester but if when the pi bond is reformed the alkoxide acts as the leaving group this breaks off and we basically reform the beta carbonyl intermediate as well as our alkoxide base now this molecule here shown let's call it C molecule C is higher in energy and less stable than the initial starting materials. Now this is a strong acid and because we have a strong base still present in our mixture, this will not be the final product. Because this has a very acidic alpha hydrogen, this alpha hydrogen will be deprotonated by this strong alkoxide base. And in step number four, we basically convert the alkoxide into an alcohol, so we basically remove all our alkoxide from our mixture to form the alcohol as well as our resonance stabilized intermediate our anion that contains the delocalization of negative charge among the carbon the first and the second oxygen so let's call this molecule D now molecule D is lower in energy and more stable than either molecule C molecule B molecule A or our initial star material. So that's exactly why this resin stabilized anion will be thermodynamically favored. We want to actually form this molecule because it is low in energy and thermodynamically stable. Now in the final step of our ester condensation with ketones, we basically add our acid in the presence of water. So let's say we add hydronium in the presence of water and the reason we do this is to basically protonate our alpha carbon to form the final product, our beta dicarbonyl product that contains two carbonyl groups as shown. And this is the final product of our ester condensation with ketones. 
Now, notice that the, an that the uh, energy level of product E is the same as product C. In fact, these two molecules are exactly the same. So why doesn't this beta dicarbonyl product, which is higher in energy and less stable than our initial starting material, why doesn't this beta dicarbonyl product go back in reverse and reform the more stable initial reactant? The answer is because we no longer have our alkoxide base in our mixture. All the alkoxide base has been basically protonated to form our alcohol and we no longer have any of this base to basically take this reaction and react it in reverse. So this molecule is stuck because it no longer can go in reverse because we no longer have our coxide base present in our mixture. And this is why this will be our last and final product, the beta dicarbonyl product. So once again, in any reaction, the presence of two esters can lead to the Claisen condensation and produce the beta keto ester as we discussed in the previous lecture. So in this reaction, in the first step, we have our ester in the presence of our alkoxide. Now the reason our alkoxide base doesn't deprotonate our ester and our Claisen condensation reaction does not take place is because our ketone has more acidic alpha hydrogens and the alkoxide will deprotonate the alpha hydrogens of the ketone before it deprotonates our alpha hydrogen of the ester. So it's the ketone ester that is formed and not our ester, um, it, it's the ketone enolate that is formed and not our ester enolate. And that's exactly why this reaction takes place. So if we have esters mixed with ketones, our ester condensation with ketones will take place. This is known as the combined aldol claisen condensation reaction and we form the beta carbonyl product.